I can tell you that at this moment, I am happily flying through the air. I hesitated for such a long time before beginning to write this book. Actually, for about 20 years. <laughs> I couldn't begin until I felt secure enough to say to my publisher, just what a publisher always wants to hear. This will take me several years, you know. But they took it on the chin. When I began the book, I knew I had to do something very difficult. I had to interest the historians. I had to amuse the jaded palate of the critical establishment. And most of all, I had to capture the imagination of the general reader. And the fact that I could set out to attempt that is thanks to the support I've had from Bill Hamilton, my agent and an excellent publishing team at Fourth Estate, at, led by Nicholas Pearson. I would like to thank them, and I would like to thank the book trade as well, for their wonderful support individually and collectively for this book. I would like to thank the Man Group for their con consistent support of this prize their commitment over many years. And um, I, I would like to thank the judges for the obvious reason, but also uh, because having been a judge myself in 1990, I don't think I've quite recovered from that summer, yet I know how exhausting it can be as well as rewarding. So thank you. I think Peter Carey said so at some point, that for an author to win the Booker Prize was like being in a train crash. Now, if that is so, I can tell you that at this moment, I am happily flying through the air. Hilary Mantel, as you just said, did win the Man Booker Prize for 2009 with her quite extraordinary novel, Wolf Hall, set in the time of Henry VIII and shaped around the character of his fixer, his hard man, Thomas Cromwell. It is truly an extraordinary invention and a few moments ago I managed to catch some words with Hilary Mantel. Hilary, congratulations. Were you surprised? Well, it's the best kind of surprise, you've got to admit. It's been very tense because I think being the favourite is a sort of extra strain. There's been all the publicity about the betting and so on. And I thought, goodness, all those people who've got money on me, I can't let them down. And yet, there's absolutely nothing you can do about it, except sit in your chair, drink your coffee and wait. Extraordinary. It's a very, very strange, long, cruel process in some ways, isn't it? Yes, a very public process. And I think the bit you rehearse is keeping a smile on your face if you don't win. Well, of course you did. Now, let's talk, talk a bit about the book, because it is for many, many people the absolute kind of classic historical novel. It's big, it explores a period in history we think we're familiar with, but you put a human face in it. How easy or difficult was it to imagine Thomas Cromwell and that period of Henry VIII? He's a man about whose private life we don't know very much, and his whole of his early life, from the age of 15 to his late 20s, is completely occluded. There's some possibilities, some speculation, but that's where imagination has to go to work. His later public career is a different matter because it's extremely well documented. So, but what we never know, absolutely never know, is the dark side of the moon. We don't know how the political process felt from the inside. We don't know the psychology of the thing. And this is where I think a novelist can operate with more freedom than a historian or biographer. You said in your uh, acceptance speech, you were saying thank you speech, that you began this book after a 20-year hesitation. Why, why did it take so long? 
I become lodged in the 18th century, if you like. Uh, the first novel I wrote, though not the first novel I published, was a novel about the French Revolution. I became involved in that and I wrote another novel set in the 18th century. And I looked at things through 18th century eyes and all that had to change. And I had to start from scratch and reformat my imagination, if you like, and start looking through Tudor eyes. I also, I think you need to get to a point where you feel competent, where you feel enough of a craftswoman to tackle a big difficult book like this. And also, you need to have the support of your publisher because it's not something you're going to do in one season. It's taken me four or five years. Uh, which means they have to have to wait for a long, long time to, to publish, in other words, to make, yes. make the money back. Well, can, let, me, let me ask you a little bit about the historical novel because it was interesting that all six of these novels in different ways was historically based. Mm. How far do you think that's because this 21st century that we're in, however fascinating it is, it's dangerous, it's difficult to come to terms with. Does it not move your imagination at all? Well, I have written contemporary novels as well as historical novels, uh, but by the time you get them to the printer, you know, they're historical novels. And we have a, a fine body of people who comment on the present day for us, and they're called journalists. And I do feel that it's a novelist's position, a novelist's job is to stand back and get some perspective, not to come at contemporary events with a kind of knee-jerk reaction. But I think that to a large extent, beyond being set in the past, the novels on the shortlist really have very little in common. So maybe it's a kind of false categorization uh, to describe them all as historical novels. And, and just a final thought, what, what does the prize mean for you? Because you also said you were warned that it can be a bit of a train wreck. Well, apparently that's what Peter Carey said uh, at the moment. Uh, I'm glad I bought the ticket, let's say. <laughs> I think um, it's a kind of confirmation that what you've been doing is okay. Keep on doing it, but do it better. You know, you've, um, you've got to produce your next sentence, your next paragraph. A writer can never be complacent. He can never rest on past glories. You always have to be pushing forward and trying to find out how far your craft and art will take you. Hilary Mantel, thank you very much and thank warm congratulations. Thank you very much. Hilary Mantel and Wolf Hall, a book the judges said of ambition, boldness, challenges and beautiful prose. The winner of the 2012 Man Booker Prize for Fiction is Bring Up the Bodies by Hilary Mantel. An historic moment. Hilary Mantel is the first woman and the first British writer to have won the Man Booker Prize twice. She's also the first to do so with a sequel. Well, I don't know. You wait 20 years for a Booker Prize. Two come along at once.